everyone. Thank you. Excited to be here, guys. I'm really excited about the. Thank you. Thank you, guys. <laughs> thank you. Uh, you watch my YouTube channel. I can tell. <laughs> yeah. You know, I ask people to tell me that. So I have people accuse me of like paying for bots and stuff in my comments because the comments are like, Jerry, you're a flipping genius. And I'm like, no, I ask people to say that to me so I can, I don't know, feel good about myself, I guess. So thank you. That means a lot to me. But guys, I'm excited to be here with you and I'm excited about the topic that I want to talk to you about because, um, because this is something that's very close to me right now in my real estate business. And the thing that I want to talk to you about on this topic here about how to build a million dollar business and specifically not a million dollar a year, but I want to talk to you about how to build a million dollar a month wholesale business. Um, and if you're working on your first deal, that's okay because I, wanna, I want you to see the vision of what the top in the industry are doing in this business. And what I've done is I've got the privilege of knowing some of these people. I don't know, obviously, all of the players. Many of them that are doing a million dollars a month are not even on social media. They're people that you and I or you have never heard of before. Um, some of them are, obviously, but some of them aren't. And so what I've done is I've kind of aggregated some of this information and data along with my own business, and I want to share that. So what I'm going to share with you isn't, isn't every single you know, million dollar producer, but much of it is, and the concepts are going to be very similar across all of these wholesalers. And so what I hope to do is kind of infuse in you, if anything, a vision of really what this business can be. Now, in my journey, I don't just wholesale and I actually treat my real estate like different businesses. So every different strategy, we treat like a different business. So I'm wearing right now just my wholesale business hat on this presentation. So uh, there's other things that I do that I really enjoy doing luxury and some development and, and fix and flip and creative and these other things. But I want to talk to you just about building a million dollar wholesale business. Fair enough. And I want to start with telling you guys a story about this house right here. So this is a wholesale deal I did. And uh, quickly, I want to tell you the story of this. This is in the development where I live in Puerto Rico. So I live in this re resort community and there's a neighborhood in my development and that's where this house is. And I had a real estate agent contact me out of the blue and say, hey, Jerry, I've got a property listing that, that I picked up from a seller and I heard you do real estate. And I said, yeah, that's right. I do real estate. And he said, I think this might be a deal you're interested in. And he told me, he said, the seller, um, a little bit older, in his 60s, <clears throat> just got diagnosed with cancer, and he wants to retire and skip town with his family. And I said, that's probably what I would do if I was in that situation. What can I do to help? And he said, he wants a cash buyer, and he wants to close quick. It's fully furnished. It's in great condition. And he wants 500000 for this house. So I said, okay, um, I don't know that neighborhood. Is 5,000 a good deal? Like, what's the play? And he says, well, first of all, I watched one of your YouTube videos where you said that you'll let the same agent who has the listing also be the buyer. And I said, yeah, it's called double dip. And he's like, well, you do that. And I said, of course. <laughs> so now he's very excited, right? And, uh, and so we start talking about the deal. And he says, I think it's worth 625, as is right now, with no work or anything. So I said, okay, show me. So... He shows me this house in the same street and that house and this one's very similar. And, and it was really easy because they're like cookie cutter houses. Like all the houses in the whole neighborhood are like identical. Anybody ever do a deal like that? It's fantastic because you're like, all my comps are like literally exactly the same. So it was easy to do. So I said, okay, I think you're right. Let's do it. So we signed the contract, double dipped with him. So he's getting the full commission with the seller. I didn't, I took the 500 price. And then, um, and here's what I did. There's a WhatsApp group in my community where all the gringos hang out. So my community is like half Puerto Ricans and half gringos, right? So the gringos all hang out on this WhatsApp group and they talk and share ideas and whatever. And, uh, and they're all guys like me that are coming there for tax incentives. And one of the rules with Act 60, which is the tax incentive I do in Puerto Rico to get 4% tax, is you have to buy your primary residence by year two when you, when you do this. So they give you a minute to get to Puerto Rico, you can rent, but by year two, you have to buy and it has to be your primary residence. So these are people, they have to, they have to let go of their house in the mainland and, and come and like integrate in. So what do you think that creates in the marketplace? A motivated buyer, yeah. 
So I put a post on this chat and I say, hey, got this house, 625, let me know if anybody wants it. And I get a ping back like five minutes later and this guy says, man, I'm up against the wall with my Act 60. Like I've been looking for a house, this is my price point. You know, um, I'm very interested. I said, great, go take a look at it. So he goes and takes a look at it and he says, I want it, uh, will you take 595 cash? Yes, I'll take 595 cash. <laughs> So I wholesale this deal. Now, what did I just do? Who thinks that's brilliant? Who thinks Jerry's a flipping genius? Yeah. No, 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 no. That's not a business, guys. What was that? That was luck. Like it was just a flu. What am I gonna do? Wait around for people to call me with a pocket listing and then have a WhatsApp group where I'm gonna flip houses? Right, no, that is not a business. That was just right place at the right time. The stars all aligned and, and I did a deal, right? Now, I believe I'm worthy of good deals, and so good deals always come to me. I think the deal of a lifetime is every week if you're in the game, but you gotta be in the game, right? So I did this deal and made all this money, but it was not a business. What is a business? Very good, predictable, great. A business is something you repeat. It's something that you can sustain, meaning you can do it again and again. There's a market for it, and it's something that you can scale. That is a business. And so the top wholesalers, where I'm going with this, is the top wholesalers in the country that are literally doing million dollar a month assignments, they understand that a business has to be repeatable, sustainable, and scalable. They understand that concept. Now in the beginning, you're just trying to do your first deal. Like who's in that boat? Like I don't care, Jerry. I mean, I'll do anything. I'm just trying to get my first deal. Great, that's fine, I get that. But very quickly, very quickly, I want you to transition from I'm trying to do a deal to I'm trying to build a business that does deals. Now there's a lot of myths around wholesaling and I see these every day in what I do I've, and I've seen it for 20 years and that is that wholesaling is a side hustle or it's entry level into real estate. It's like a beginner thing to do but every, everyone starts out wholesaling and then, then they're gonna transition into something you know, more special like fix and flip or something, right? Or rentals. And so they have this attitude that it's like a springboard into something else. And certainly all of those things are true. In fact, they're sort of true for me. I've continued to wholesale, but I've also transitioned into other things. And so, but the fact that it, that it is not that, or it doesn't have to be that, is what I wanna share with you. The reality is that it's not anything like that, right? It's not, it's a billion dollar industry, multi-billion dollar industry. I don't know if you guys know InvestorLift, but I'm friends with the founder and owner, and just on that platform alone, they're doing $14 billion in transactions. And he thinks he accounts for maybe 10% of the market, if that. Okay, this is a multi, multi-billion dollar industry, which means you can create a multi-million dollar business. But, this is something I talked about with Eric Klein, and, and he said it, wholesaling is not real estate it's marketing and sales. In fact, the less you know about real estate, the better you will do, right Eric? Yes. <laughs> and Eric's proof because he did 2.6 million in his first year in the business not knowing anything about real estate. So if you think what's holding me back is I just need to know more real estate, that's actually not true at all. And if you look at the top wholesalers, okay, the, the one percenters, the million dollar producers, there's very little real estate that actually happens in that business. The widget just happens to be a house, but it's marketing and sales and it's business. That's what it is. So I wanna share this with you so that you can get past this limiting belief that you just don't know enough about real estate. It's not true. So what is it that separates these million dollar producers? What is it that makes them different from the rest? And that's what I wanna do. I wanna to talk to you about some very specific principles, but I also wanna lay out 10 actual things, attributes, things that they're doing in their business that are allowing them to do these kind of numbers. And guys, I haven't met this kid yet. Um, Rob over at InvestorLift told me about him. There's a 19 year old kid, I don't know where he's from or anything about him, but there's a 19 year old kid doing a million dollars a month in assignments in wholesale real estate, 19 year old kid. Okay, whatever story you have for me about why you can't do it, it's not true. It's just not true at all. You guys with me? 
You guys believe that? Raise your hand if you're with me on that. Stop telling yourself stories about how you can't do this or how it's hard or you, you're missing something. You're not. You know right now everything you need to know to go be very successful in this business. You already know enough. You don't need to watch another YouTube video. Well, watch one more of mine, but then after that one, you don't need, you don't need to watch anymore. But what the big difference is, the mindset shift that these producers have is they don't focus on the deal. They focus on the business of deals. Okay, it's just a process to master. So I wanna go through these 10 things right here. I wanna go through them one by one and I wanna break these down and explain to you how they're doing these things differently than most of you and most of us, okay? First of all, let's talk about volume and margin. So the top producers doing a million dollars a month, they're doing volume, there's no doubt about it, but they're also doing margin. It's very important that you combine the two if you wanna do a million dollars a month in a wholesale real estate. Right, so they have, very, they have very specific minimum requirements for the assignment fees. Okay, when you get into real estate, you're happy to make that, you're happy to make $5,000 on your deal, you're happy to make $10,000 on a deal, right? You're, you're trying to, it's proof of concept, I get that. Most of them have minimum $25,000 average assignments. And that's my company, my wholesale company, we have the same thing. We wanna be hitting minimum 25. There's a wholesaler in LA and their average assignment fees are 50,000 in LA. And their goal is to, do, is to do one a week, okay? Or I'm sorry, to, do, to, do, to get one deal a week. So they're doing five in a week, one a day, five a week. They're doing 250,000 a week in assignments, which is a million dollars a month, okay? But they're hitting $50,000 assignments. So and now that's LA, so that's a market that's got a price point that can support that, but it doesn't matter. I mean, that's part of it, but it's also a belief that you can buy deep enough to create big enough assignment fees. If you just did one thing differently and you doubled your assignment fees right now, and all you did was made the same amount of offers, you just offered deeper, you probably wouldn't see much of a ratio shift than you think you would you probably would be very consistent with what you're already doing. Because you just, but you just have a belief now that you can offer a little bit lower and you would still get the deal if you just held firm on that number. All right, would you agree with that, Eric? I mean, I, I really believe that it's more of a mindset than anything else to create a bigger assignment fee. Okay, number two is the top wholesalers in the country are very careful about the markets that they go into. And I wanna talk about three big things that they're doing. And again, a lot of this is from my own wholesale business, but they are not going in markets that have a low cash buyer count. They're staying away from rural and they're staying away from low price points. So here's how this looks. They're reverse engineering the market. And I talked a little bit about this to the VIP group last night, but first, they're going to a market where there's buyers. It's buyers that matter about where you invest, meaning the cash buyers. It's all about the cash buyers. Because if you can go into a market that has heavy cash buyer count, there's a lot of cash buyers, and you know how to do acquisitions, you're going to win and you're going to win big because it's about the buyers for your inventory. Okay, so I did a sample. I went on uh, my new software, PropWire. Anybody using PropWire? Yeah. Is Taddy in here? Great, good for you guys. So I went on a PropWire right before, as I was building these slides, and I went to Bakersfield, California. And in Bakersfield, California, the population's about 400,000, and I pulled 10,000 cash buyers, okay? And then I went to Tampa, Florida, about 400,000 population, so same size town, and I pulled 15,000 cash buyers using the same, the same, um, fields, right? So it was, it was apples to apples. Now, if all things were equal, not that you can't do deals in either one of them, but if all things were equal, equal, which market would you choose to wholesale in? Tampa, Tampa all day. Why? 50% more buyer count in Tampa over Bakersfield, California. Now, again, you can go do deals in Bakersfield and do really well. It's not that, but what is the principle? Go where the buyers are. So one of the things that we're doing in, in my wholesale business is 
When a lead comes in and we're on the phone with a warm lead, what is the very first thing we're doing with that lead? We're looking up the buyers. And I wanna know what's the buyer count within half a mile, five miles, and 15 miles. How many buyers are there for my lead that I'm about to make an offer on with a seller? And the lower the buyer count, the what? The lower my offer. Okay, because I know that I've got to buy deep if I'm going to move a property with a low buyer count or we'll just stay away from it because it's not worth all the work. Okay, and I'm going to get to that in a minute of our dispo side of this and, and what the top wholesalers are doing. So guys, you can check that out and go on that software. It's joinpropwire.com, totally free. It always will be free. And you, you have unlimited searches and unlimited downloads and it's got cash buyers on there. So it's, it's fantastic. Okay, so the second thing is they're avoiding rural markets. Now, here's our criteria, and this is what a lot of the top wholesalers are doing that I talk to, is the county where you're marketing has to have a minimum of 500,000 population in the county, and the, the lead has to be within 45 minute drive to a major metro. Maybe an hour, don't push an hour. Do you know what happens to your ability to wholesale, to dispo, once you get past an hour from a major metro? Because where are all the buyers? They're in the major metros and they'll go 45 minutes. And guys, ask me how I know all of this because I've fallen on my face so many times that I now have the data. As soon as we get outside of an hour drive, the ability to wholesale gets 10 times harder. Dispo, dispo becomes a nightmare because cash buyers just don't wanna go that far and there's not very many outside of the metros. Okay, so this is a great filter that they have. And low price markets. So most of the top wholesalers, in order to create big assignment fees, what do you also have to have? Higher price point markets, right? It's hard to pull a 50K assignment when the average value is 150 in, in the market you're in. That's really hard to do. Now you can pull some 25s off, but you can't pull the 50s off unless you start to get into some higher price points. It's just more challenging, right? So. A lot of them have a minimum median sales price of 300,000. And, and ironically, I looked up Bakersfield's 361 and Tampa's 389 as the, as the average median sale price. So it kind of fits that bucket of a great market to wholesale in. But the top wholesalers are not in, are not in inner city Detroit. They're just not there. And why aren't they there? You just can't create big assignment fees in that market. It's the same amount of work. Guys, I also fix and flip, and guess what? I, can, I recently bought a house for 1.8 million. I put a million dollars into the rehab, right? So I'm all in for 3.8, sold it for, or what am I all in? No, 1.8, 2.8, I'm all in for 2.8, sold it for 4.6, okay? Yeah, a million four was my net profit on one deal, and guess what? I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not telling you about, about it for that. I'm telling you about it because that was just as much work as a little entry level $150,000 fix and flip where I make 30, just as much work. I mean, more zeros, but about the same amount of work. Why? I got a closing, I got to buy it, I got to get, I got to get funding, I got to hire a contractor, all the same things. So if I'm going to leverage my time, energy, and effort in this business, why would I not also choose a market conducive of bigger profits, same amount of work. Your PPC leads don't care if it's a $100,000 house or a $400,000 house, right? For the most part. Okay, number three, speaking of PPC, PPC is the number one marketing channel for all the big players. They are doing PPC. What's PPC? Pay-per-click, it's Google and Facebook ads. And why is that? Why do you think that is? Yeah, there's a, okay, scalable I heard, I heard motivation. Let's talk about PPC for a second. There's a massive difference between inbound and outbound, isn't there? So let's take pre-foreclosure leads as an example. When you text and cold call a pre-foreclosure lead, you're contacting, you're outbounding that seller early in their process. Their pain is just barely starting. And you're calling them, right? Or you're texting them. But outbound with PPC, that means they saw your ad and they're calling you. 
which means what now? They're at the end of the rope. They're at the end of the line. Our average pre-foreclosure leads, their auction date is two weeks away. That's when they call. We call it the, the ostrich in the sand, right? Head in the sand. So they think it's gonna solve itself, the problem, and it doesn't, right? In fact, it gets worse. And then at the last minute, they're like, oh crap, we're about to lose our house. And then they call you. So very different intent, very different timing on the intent. So that's one reason. But there's another reason why this is so powerful. It's all about who gets to answer the question. And what is the question? The question at, at some point in time, and if you take in Eric's sales training, you're gonna go through this whole process, but there's gonna come a moment in time where you're gonna ask the question, Mr. Seller, have you thought about a price you want for your house? And if that was an outbound and you say, what's the price you want for your house? What does that seller say? Well, you called me. And now who controls the sale process? Who controls the, the price? The seller does because they got to answer the question. Now let's take inbound. Let's take PPC. And now the seller is saying, hey, Mr. Wholesaler, what price are you willing to pay for my house? And what do you get to say? You called me. That's where the big assignment fee happens. And the numbers are staggering, guys. Uh, I'll show them in a minute, because I'm, I'm gonna use KPIs next to show, I'm gonna actually do a side, who wants to see KPIs where you take text and cold call right next to PPC? Yes. Okay, this is, I'll show this right now. This is powerful. Number four is, is the top wholesalers in the country are fanatical with tracking. Testing and tracking, testing and tracking. They know to the penny their ad spend, they know that to the penny their ratios, they know exactly what their conversions are. Because why? It's not, a, it's not a house, this isn't real estate. What is it? Marketing. Marketing and sales. It's business. It's not real estate, okay? And there's four, there's the top four. Cost per lead, lead per contract, the cash conversion cycle, and the profit per contract. These are the four most important metrics. There's lots of metrics, but these are the four that matter the most. And I'm gonna go through each one of these. And I'm gonna, now we're gonna do a comparison. So let's take cost per lead. So how much money are you spending in marketing to generate a lead? Text and cold call on average, and everybody's gonna give you a different number, but it's gonna range somewhere in the $25 per lead when you do text and cold call, okay? PPC, it's running around 100, maybe 80, maybe 120, but around $100. So, so far text and cold call are winning, right? But they're not winning. Wait till you see what happens. Average lead per contract now is like 30 to one with text and cold call. PPC, it's like 10 to one. See a big difference? So that means now, how many of those leads that you just spent money on are you converting into a, into a contract? So 10 to one is pretty great. That's pretty amazing. And I know some that are doing eight to one, but 12 to one, anywhere in that range is phenomenal. Okay, next let's talk about the cash conversion cycle. So cash conversion cycle is, if I spend a dollar today on marketing, how many days until I get that dollar back and turn a profit? And the shorter you can create a cash conversion cycle in any business, the more that business is gonna just flourish. Because why? You can turn the money again. So you, you put the money out, you get it back, you can turn it around again. The more times the dollar turns in a year, the more money you're gonna make as in any business. This is any business, especially our business. Okay, so the average cash conversion cycle is really long with text and cold call. Why? We talked about it earlier, why? Because you're catching them on day 90 of foreclosure, pre-foreclosure, and they still have six months before they're at the two week mark. The motivation level is really low, so the money spent and now you're doing follow-up, follow-up, follow-up. You're working those leads, working those leads to, until they are ready to, to commit, okay? Whereas PPC, it's like 45 days. It's way shorter. Again, why? The intent is so much higher with PPC because they're inbounding. Big difference. Right now, everyone should be saying PPC is completely destroying 
text and cold calling, right, side by side. But this is the real kicker. Uh-oh, did that one shut down? Can you guys see that one? This is, this is the real kicker is the average assignment fees are around 10,000 with, with text and cold call, and they're around 30,000 with PPC. Remember why? Who gets to answer the question? That's why. You create the deep buys when you get to say, well, hey, you called me. Right, because remember, what's the, what's the old Chinese proverb? He who names the price first loses. Right, he who names the price first loses. Okay, and that's why. Let's keep going. Okay, number five, strict property criteria. So let's talk about the buy box a little bit. This is, this is actually my criteria for the most part. These are the, these are the filters we use in all of our marketing is only single family residential. So the top wholesalers in the country are just doing single family residential. That means they're not doing what? Land and condos and mobile homes and this and that. They don't do that. They stick to just single family residential. They're not doing small houses, so they do minimum square footage of 900. They're not doing two bedrooms and smaller. Why? Who's dispo to two bedroom? Unless it's like a two bedroom market, like they're all two bedrooms in California somewhere or something like that. But most people don't want to buy a two bedroom house or a small house that's hard to do. Remember, I'm now thinking about a business that I want to scale. And if I've got a dispo of two bedroom, it's just so much work. It's a lot harder to do. Now someone's gonna say, well, I dispo to two bedroom and made a bunch of money. I know, you can do it. I'm just talking about what the top wholesalers are doing. And then the top wholesalers don't do old, old houses. Why? Those contracts fall through. They've got foundation issues. They're just hard, you know? It's hard for a cash buyer to pull the trigger on a house built in 1890, why? because they, don't, they just they can't wrap their head around the rehab. It's really hard to. I know I rehab and it's just hard. So we have a minimum 1940, some have a minimum 1960. The real cutoff point in America was 1960 because what happened in 1960? They updated the code. So electrical, plumbing, mechanical all got massive upgrades. We went from knob and tube to wire and all these things. And so you'll see a massive difference in cost to renovate pre-1960 homes. So the biggest wholesalers know that, and they know that it's gonna be hard to dispo an old house. Vacant, this is one of our filters. Now we're not entirely vacant only, but do you know how much easier wholesaling gets when the property's vacant? Big difference, right? When there's not a homeowner living in the house. And then condition, uh, the top wholesalers stay away from heavy rehab. So like your full guts, they just stay away from them. Again, it shrinks your buyer pool when you have these out, these things that make it harder. So that's all. Okay, let's go to this one. Now this one is very important. This one is one that I've been really redeveloping, redefining how we come to our buy price. And I'm gonna share with you what I'm doing in my business and most of the top wholesalers are doing some sort of a variation. I really wanna to get to the principle of it, but you guys can kind of follow what I'm doing if you want as well. But this is it, no comping, no repairs. Did you guys know that? The top wholesalers in the country are not comping and they're not estimating repairs. Who would like to do this business and do a million dollars a month without comping and without doing repairs? Are you kidding me? What could you just do to your acquisitions department if they don't have to comp anymore? You've just, you've just eliminated an and a skill set that is very difficult to learn and takes years to master, comping, <laughs> right? Like that's hard to do. So the top wholesalers, their teams on acquisitions, they don't even learn comping. Comping is not even part of their process. Isn't that cool? What they do instead is they're just wholesaling at a percentage of the current as is value. And where do we get the current as is value of a property? It's right in our face and it's very accurate. So let's talk about it. We're gonna look at, I'm gonna grab my pointer right now because I wanna point this out to you. So this is a, a, a simple calculator that I built. I'll give this to you guys for free, but I wanna walk you through how this works. So actually I'm not gonna be able to do it very well. Well, you can see it. So if you look here 
under the as-is value, you'll see I have Zillow, Realtor, and Redfin. Everybody see that? So right now you can go on Zillow and it's gonna, what does Zillow call their, their Zestimate? What does Realtor.com call it? They call it Real Estimate. And then Redfin, they're super creative, they call it Redfin Estimate. Genius, right? Now what are these numbers that these, these companies are coming up with? What, how are they even getting to these values? Yeah, now it used to be a joke. Who's been around a little while and used to see the Zillow number and you would just like, where did they get that number? Like, but they've now invested and the technology's gotten so good that they are dead on accurate now. Now you're gonna tell me, well, I knew this one deal and it wasn't, but I'm gonna tell you why they were and you were, you were the one that was wrong. Zillow actually publishes now their, their accuracy in any market. You go on Zillow, you go on Realtor.com, and you go on Redfin, and if you just type in Google Zillow Accuracy Report, it will pull up your market and it will give you the stats on how accurate. And on average, with on market, Zillow's running, in most markets, they're running around two to 3% accuracy, or off, okay? They're very close, and so are all the other ones. Now, off market, data, they're a little bit off. They're more like eight to 9%. And why do you think that is? Why is off market, their off market data a little bit off? Well, it's probably not, act, it's probably not updated, right? So when something goes on market, the agent's probably gonna update the, the information so it's more accurate, like bedrooms or square footage or whatever. But the point here is that if we now have data that's telling us this is the as-is value. Now, the, I wanna be very clear here. This is not ARV. So when you see a Zillow number, that's not the ARV. That's what Zillow says it's worth as it sits right now currently. Okay, so if it is a newly renovated home, then the Zestimate is probably gonna reflect you know, that as-is value. But how is that different than ARV? Why, is it, why would ARV be different? Yeah, so Zillow can't really tell us ARV because they can't really tell that it's been all newly updated and it's the top of the market price now. But what they can do is they can say, we've looked at thousands of data points and we can tell you what an average property is worth, like a normal property that's not newly renovated is worth with almost pinpoint precision. Now, I share that with you because what I'm doing is I'm getting all three of those numbers. And if you've got another software you use or whatever, you can add a fourth in there. So this is actually a calculator. So all you have to do so far is just go look up the Zillow, Realtor, and Redfin. And my tech team is working on AI that will just do it for you. Imagine putting the address in and it goes and gets those values for you. So we have VAs right now that are doing this, but we're gonna be quickly implementing where it just automates it for you. Now, it's gonna take the average. You guys see right next to there where it says average of 147. By the way, this is the house that we wholesaled here a couple weeks ago or whatever near Mobile, Alabama. And so it's saying that right now the average of this property is 147,533. Everybody see that? So then what I'm saying is I'm saying, okay, well, what would a cash buyer want to pay for a property with an average as its value of 147? And so we have a scale, I'll show it to you in a second. But I'm gonna say that 60% of that value is where a cash buyer would wanna buy this property, which would, which would be what price? 88.5, everybody see that? So 88.5 is 60% of 147. That's my exit number, or that's the number I want a wholesaler or a cash buyer to pay for my property. And then I've got my wholesale, minimum wholesale fee of 20,000. You guys see that underneath it? Which means I have to buy it for what? 68.5, which means I'm actually buying at 46% of Zillow or of the average. Okay, now I bought this property for 69. We actually didn't quite get 88. We got a, a little bit less, but right on the, pretty close on these numbers without comping and without repair. None of that, okay? Now let me show you my scale here because this is important. Remember how I talked about the exit? So if a property is under 150,000 in value, then the exit number is 60%. If it goes up to 150 to 200, we go to 65%. And you can see I incrementally go up based on price. 
And why do you think that is? Anybody have an idea why we can incrementally exit at a higher number as the price goes up? Well, think about your, your buyers on the other end. Um, just because price is going up doesn't mean dollar for dollar the percentages are equal because they're okay to make they're okay to make less money even though the price goes up. So we can actually adjust our scale based on price. I hope that makes sense. So you, if you're in a hot market and you're up in the 500,000 price point, you can exit those at 80, 80% of the as is value because there's still big profit on the deal. We also adjust our profit because the higher price point I go, then the higher wholesale fee I can earn. That makes sense? So you can see, you know, we've got these minimums at 20, and then as soon as we get to 200,000, we go to 25, 200 to 300, then 300 to 400, we go to 35, and then 400, 500, we go to 45. And again, what price point am I targeting in most of my marketing? 300 up, which means my assignment fees are now hitting the 35s and 40s and 45s. We're, we're hitting high assignment fees in my business, which means I can do a quarter of the deals small wholesalers are doing to make the same amount of money. And then I add volume behind that and what just happened? I'm doing a million dollars a month in, in real estate, right? Okay, so let me give you one more example because I really want this to sink in. This is a property we have right now and I think today or yesterday we might have gotten the contract on this. It's in Tabernacle, New Jersey. Anybody been to Tabernacle, New Jersey? Me neither. I never will. Okay, uh, great market, and we got this house. You can see here I got the Zillow number, the Realtor number, and the Redfin number. My average is 461. Now that's not ARV, right? Not ARV, as is. So I'm exiting this deal at 80%, which means I want a buyer around 369. Uh, I subtract out my 45K wholesale. Where did I get 45K? Go back to my scale. 45K is in the 400 to 500 range, so we bump it to 45. So this formula, the green boxes, are all formulas. The only input into this calculator is what? The values, that's it. You have no thinking to do. Guess who does this entry for us in our, in our acquisitions? A $4 VA is making the decisions on our business, a $4 VA. Now there's one thing that I have to make sure they do, which is what? Put the right number in the Zillow box. That's it. That's all I gotta do to now do a million dollars a month in my business. Now there's a lot more to it, right? <laughs> but my point with this is what just happened to the brain power in acquisitions? I just took it away, I McDonaldized. I, I literally made this McDonald's in my business. Now, I still need a good salesperson on the phone because sales is not about the number, it's about what? The relationship. So I gotta have somebody on the phone that's got a good relationship, but all I need is somebody good on the phone that can create a relationship. That's all I really need. That's it. No company, no repairs. We don't even talk about that stuff anymore. I don't even care how old your roof is or if the AC needs replaced. I could care less, why? Because I've built in a buy number that's gonna factor all of that in anyway. Unless it's a heavy gut, that's gonna throw everything off. So if we stay away from heavy guts and it's just kitchen, kitchen bath carpet paint, you know, dated and old and needs new stuff, that's it. Okay, so is, there, is this making sense to everybody? Yeah. You guys with me so far? You guys want this? Yeah. Just go to freeoffercalculator.com and it's yours, free. Just download that, you can have it. Now, I created this URL because I am going to make this software. Right now it's just an Excel spreadsheet. This will be software where you literally will put in the address and it'll go, Brrr, there you go, sir. And so then you won't even need the $4 VA anymore to input the Zillow number. That'll all be done. Okay, let's move along. Number seven, Dispo is most important in the business. Now I never thought this way before. In fact, this actually was not true in the past two years when we were in the boom market and why? Why was Dispo like the last thing on your mind? Because it was the easiest thing to do, right? How many of you, I do a lot of interviews with brand new wholesalers who do their first deal on my YouTube channel. And I always ask them, I said, how did you find your cash buyer? And guess what they say? I put a post on Facebook and I had 18 buyers that wanted my house, right? Yes, sir. You're one of them. Hey, yes, I am. 
they yeah. Really yeah, we'll get it out. I don't know. It's on the docket. But, but he's, a, he's a great example. And so that's not dispo. No, what is that? It's freaking a hot market. That's all that is. If you think you have a business by putting a post on Facebook, you're in big trouble. That's not a business. What's a business? A process that when the market shifts, you still wholesale. If the market shifts and you put a post on Facebook and your house doesn't sell, what just happened to your business? You're out of business, okay? So we used to just ignore this, but it was like an afterthought. It was like a joke. Like, I don't even need to hire anybody. I just need to wave a contract in the air and someone's gonna take it. Not anymore. What just happened to all the cash buyers? Well, the fly-by-nights are all gone, right? The, the hedge funds paying a dollar ten, right, of value. They're gone. You know, they're back. The hedge funds are back, but they're, guess what they're doing differently now? Wow, they're buying at a, like a smart formula, right? They're buying with some equity. There's an idea. So now the cash buyer management process, DISPO, has become a real thing. Like it's something that you have to put effort and attention into and you have to develop the processes to do DISPO the right way. And like I said earlier, we're putting DISPO in the business as the front and center, meaning we're not buying this house if we can't DISPO it. And I'm gonna make the decision about buying it, not based on how old is the roof, but I'm basing it on are there cash buyers if I get this deal? And are there a lot of them or enough of them, okay? So let's talk about Dispo just for a second. I know I'm teaching and, and everything I'm doing that your first hire is Dispo, not acquisitions. Your first hire should be Dispo. If you've got a, if you're gonna pick between where should I put my number one salesperson, where should you put them? Dispo, not acquisitions. What did we just do to acquisitions? We just dumbed it down, right? We're not doing, we're not doing these you know, negotiation skills on acquisitions anymore. What are we doing? We're going through, we're, we're building a relationship and we're saying, this is my number, right? That's all we're doing. Okay, now, um, the top wholesalers in the country are not hiring within the industry, why? Because they know too much about what? Real estate, that's the problem. The problem when you hire industry is they know about real estate and they're gonna screw this whole thing up because they know too much. And they're gonna to wanna to comp. That's what they're gonna to wanna to do. They're gonna to wanna, to, man, did you see this comp? Who cares about that stupid comp? How many buyers are in the neighborhood? Like, that's what I wanna know, right? I don't care about that comp. And I'm kind of, you know, I'm, I'm being facetious, but it's more about that. So outside salespeople that are coming from other industries, what happens when you take a top salesperson and you bring them into wholesale real estate? Good night. Like they've never seen so much money. They've never seen a, an industry that you could do sales and do that well as, real, as wholesale real estate. Okay. You need to go find the top producing car salesman and bring them as your dispo. Not somebody in the industry. Can we hear a woo? <laughs> okay. Uh, and the other thing that that the top wholesalers are doing is they are not becoming a cash buyer employee. What is a cash buyer employee? Where you work for the cash buyer. How many of you are like, man, I got this cash buyer. He's amazing. He buys everything we bring him. I'm set. I don't even need to worry about it. I got a buyer. And he told me himself that he'll buy everything I get. What just happens when you do that? You work for that cash buyer. And let me promise you something. What's he gonna do with your next deal you bring him. He's going, man, I'll tell you what, I know you want that price, but I really need it at this price. I'll get you on the next one, but man, hook me up. Look at all the deals I bought from you. And now what are you doing? You're discounting your assignments because you're too freaking lazy to go what? Find the real cash buyers, find the highest paying cash buyer. You have a fiduciary responsibility to yourself, to your family, to your employees, to everybody, to get the highest price the market will pay for your deal. That's your job. Not the easiest way out, not the first buyer that comes along. Do you know what Tony does over in, in, in their business? They have a minimum of five offers before they will take a contract that's below their ask price. 
They will not dispo without five written, bona fide written offers. Why are they doing that? So they teach their team not to freaking be lazy and look for the easy way out. To keep looking. And guess what happens when they do that? And by the way, I learned that from him today, and we are now implementing that in my dispo department. We are now implementing that. Yeah, isn't that cool? That's why you come to things like this, by the way, guys. That's why you talk to people doing things in business, so you learn things. Guess what happens when they have that, because they have that policy in their dispo department? They end up getting over their asking price on their dispo. Because why? Because they did the extra effort. They went the extra mile. They got one more offer. They called one more cash buyer. They did more outreach. They did more marketing. And then they found the outlier who was willing to pay their price or more. Because they put in the effort to do it. And that's what the top wholesalers are doing in the country. They don't just have a list and send the list out. They're doing massive outreach. They're doing, so what are the things that they're doing? We have a full-time person on our Dispo team and they are, they are cold calling and texting the active local cash buyers in the marketplace. And what are they doing when they cold call? They call up that cash buyer, what are they saying? Hey, I see you bought a house over on Elm Street. That's like two streets away from a deal I've got right now. I'm just wondering if you're looking for another deal. And we've got one right now. In fact, I see what you paid for that house. And this one's actually a little bit under that. And it's the same house. Are you interested? Like we have outreach now to cash buyers in the marketplace and all the other things that you're doing, right? So it's a very strategic, aggressive approach to dispo. Okay, number eight, this is very important. We have a policy, the better it shows, the more it sells. And the, the, the numbers that we're getting and the feedback, the data that we've gathered on, on what I'm gonna share right now has, is literally doubling our assignments. And I'm talking about pictures, I'm talking about video, and I'm talking about 3D tours like Matterport. Okay, our philosophy is, I want this property to show so well that a cash buyer will buy it without looking at it. Without going to look at it, he'll buy it. He'll click the buy now button and he'll buy it right now. Now the only way a cash buyer is gonna do that is if what? Is if it shows really well. Now, I've done this where I don't do video and I don't do Matterport, that costs money, and I don't do those things, and I just send out pictures. And we've split test this, where we dispo out to a list and we say, hey, here's this deal. And here's these crappy pictures, because I wasn't even thinking about how it shows. And then we get crickets or we get some tire kickers. And then we go in and we take professional pictures with good lighting. And we do a really good video walkthrough of the property. And we even do a 3D tour, where you can see now the floor plan and the walkthrough. And we'll see, we'll sell that deal now, like instantly. We'll have the phones blowing up. Nothing different, price the same, same house, nothing changed other than now it shows really well. So here's what we're doing before we dispo. Now I don't do this on every deal. It does cost money and it is high risk because these are properties I don't own. But if it's vacant and if it's the right market and if it's the right assignment fee, we will rekey and, and lockbox the house. We will trash it out and clean it. Okay, because what am I focusing on? Showing how well does it show? And then we will take pictures and video and do the tour. And then we will dispo the property. Okay, now be careful with that because again, this is a property that you don't own yet. <laughs> so am I gonna lose on a deal that doesn't close by doing this and just spent money? Sure. But if I'm getting on average five, $10,000 more because my property shows so well and cash buyers are buying them, is that worth here and there paying for a trash out that I never bought? Easily easily justifies the risk. So it's a risk, but it's been paying off tremendously. So we're doing this quite a bit on vacant properties. Okay. Uh, I talked about this a little bit, proactive cash buyer outreach. Let's talk about this a little bit in more depth here. So what we'll do is we'll research out the cash buyers within half a mile, five miles, and 15 miles. And then we're gonna do direct outreach to those buyers. 
And we actually have a VA on our dispo team that just texts and cold calls those buyers. Okay. And so now what I'm doing is I'm saying, okay, well, who's actively buying? When did they buy? What did they buy? We're doing this research and you can gather this data. How different would your dispo be if you put this type of effort into finding a buyer for your house? Would that be powerful? Okay, and then the 10th principle or the 10th attribute that the top wholesalers are doing is they're doing, is their goal is to move inventory fast. Now, in my business, we want a contract in 48 hours. Uh, 48 hours. So what that means is it means clearly you had to buy right, but I want that contract move. What happens, who, how many of you have been in a dispo deal where it's like two weeks and all your time, all your energy, you're working it, you're working it, you're working it. You're trying to convince somebody to come up. To, next thing you know, you're like, man, if I can just squeak you know, $3,000 out of, I'm, I'm at the finish line. I, if I can just get five grand out of this deal. All of that work is creating a massive bog in your wholesale business. So I want that thing gone in 48 hours. So we have a asking price, but then we put a buy it now price. And if I've done my job and it shows well, we get a lot of buy it now sales. And we, get, we I want that cash buyer to click on that thing and take it right now. Okay, so out of time here, but I wanna, I wanna tell you that uh, if you guys want, you guys that are early in the process, if you wanna dispo with me, if you wanna JV with me, I will JV your deals. Now, I'm not gonna JV your deal if it's crap, and I'm gonna tell you if it's crap. Like if I don't think we can pull a 20K or 25K or higher out of it, and if I don't think it meets all the things I just talked about, don't submit it, don't do it. But if you want my team to dispo your deal and JV, I will do that with you. Sound cool? You guys that wanna do that? Okay, awesome. So you can just go to, yeah, just go, just go to dispowithjerry.com. Right now it's a simple form. We're building out a portal where you'll be able to just upload everything and, and really streamline the process. Uh, one final thought here. Those of you that wanna go from zero to a million dollars a month, raise your hand. At some point, if you wanna do that. Okay, great, so some of you do. So phase one looks like this. You've gotta get the proof of concept. There's something psychological that happens when you do the first deal and you get proof of concept. Phase two is gonna to be to replace poor job. Yeah, your poor job. <laughs> that meant to say your job, but I'm sure the job's poor too. <laughs> replace your job. Step, phase two is to replace your job. At that point, you're gonna be a solopreneur. You're gonna be a one girl or a one guy shop doing everything. As a solopreneur in this business, you can do to one to three a month before you run out of bandwidth, okay? Phase three is gonna look like this. You wanna replace yourself. First replace your job, then replace yourself. That means you need to hire Dispo first and then acquisition second. Once you have a Dispo and an acquisitions, you've just removed yourself from operations. Now, it doesn't mean you're going to the beach in Puerto Rico all day, but what does it mean? It means now you can focus on what? Yes, you can focus on the business. You can be working on the business, not in the business. That is a game changer, phase three. And that's gonna get you to the, how many more? Yeah, that's gonna get you to the five deals. Phase four is gonna be scaled to 100,000 a month. Now, there's a couple principles, I talked about them. You've got to get to higher assignments. You cannot do $100,000 a month if you're not pulling higher assignments. It's just too many deals at five grand a pop. And it's just gonna kill the whole thing. You're not gonna be able to afford the marketing, it's just not gonna work. And this is where, phase four, is where you have to transition and become good at outbound marketing or sorry, inbound marketing. I got that wrong on there, so if you guys take a picture of that, scratch it out. You wanna get, you wanna go from um, outbound to inbound. You wanna do PPC. Learning PPC and mastering PPC at this level is critical. You will not be able to do it with just cold call and texting or really a lot of the other marketing methods. You have to learn PPC. And then you can get to the, once you've gotten to the $1,000 a month, you wouldn't believe how easy it is to do the next jump. Because what's in place when you're doing 100,000 a month in assignments? You've got some things in place, now you just need to, to turn the juice up, baby. Now you just need to dial it in. Now you just need to dump more money in the front end and, and you can go from there to a million very quickly. There's a principle called the law of momentum. What's the law of momentum? 
Yeah, the law of momentum says it's very hard in the beginning. It's like, if you think about a train, did you guys know this, that if you take a train that's stopped and you put a four by four in front of the train and then you tell the train to go, like you push whatever you do on a train, you push go. The four by four will stop the train from moving forward. Do you guys know this? But if the train's going 80 miles an hour down the tracks and you lay a four by four on the tracks, what's it gonna do? It's gonna freaking plow right through it like it didn't even matter. It was like butter. Okay, what's gonna happen to your obstacles? The obstacles you face, the challenges you face, it's gonna be hard. Your first deal is hard. Guess what? Your 10th deal is 10 times easier than your first deal and your 100th deal is 100 times easier than your 10th deal. And you create that momentum and when momentum is working in your favor, you will now grow this business exponentially faster than you ever did in the beginning, but you've got to get the momentum. Okay, if you're facing that right now, the four by four on the tracks that's stopping you, just understand the law of momentum. You've got to get through that. There's no other way than to push through those obstacles. But when you do, and that train starts to move, it's gonna move faster, and it's gonna move faster, and it's gonna pick up speed. And you've gotta understand that to get to this, this million dollar a month, and where you're doing the 20 to 40 deals a month, or whatever that looks like to get there. Okay, or, oh yeah, or, or this guys, don't do any of this, seriously. Don't do any of it. Don't be the mega wholesaler. Do the complete opposite, okay? Doing a little switcheroo here on you, sort of. Okay, what I mean by this is, if you're at the one to five phase of your business, do you really want to go up against the mega wholesalers in your yeah. market? Yeah, yeah. Do, do, I want to be the best. Well, when you're doing one, to, I love that, but when you're doing one to five, are they gonna outspend you? Yeah, are they gonna outspend you? Are they gonna are they gonna outmarket you? Are they gonna do they have better salespeople than you do? Are they gonna get to the deal before you do? They're gonna destroy you if you go head to head. Just know it and own it. It's okay. So what you could do is not any of this, in fact, do the opposite. Specialize in land, specialize in two bedrooms, specialize in mobile homes. Specialize in condos, specialize in low income. Don't do what they're doing because they're not there. They're not in, they're not looking at that deal. And when you're looking at that mobile home, you're not going against mega wholesalers now. You might be going against somebody, but he ain't a mega wholesaler because he ain't looking at that mobile home. That's the point I'm trying to make. That's the only point I'm trying to make. You wanna be a mega wholesaler though? This is where you have to go with your business if you wanna be a mega wholesaler. So own it, own your choice. Make sense? But here's how I look at it. Donald Trump said, if you have to think anyway, why not think big? My philosophy is, if I'm gonna wholesale anyway, why not be a mega wholesaler and do a million dollars a month? I'm doing it anyway. Why not be a mega wholesaler and do a million dollars a month anyway? I'm doing it anyway, why not do it big? That's all I got for you guys, thank you. See you guys around. All right, thank you. I'm done here. You know what time it is! Freaking amazing time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.